That day, Quentin Hall stayed up late in his office. And it wasn't entirely because his workload was so heavy that the man had to continue working even from home. The main reason was different. It was because three days ago, Quentin and his son Liam had a huge fight. They started arguing because the young man was in a relationship with the woman that was 10 years older than him. It could have been fine, but Quentin's extensive life experience led him to believe that Liam's girlfriend was only interested in his money. The banker believed that everything in the world revolved around money. Therefore, Quentin didn't believe that the woman's feelings for his son were sincere. Subconsciously, the businessman knew that Liam was missing his mother, who had died 15 years ago. Quentin did everything in his power to save his wife. Unfortunately, there was nothing he could do. Even medicine is powerless sometimes. It was one of those cases when even doctors said that only a miracle could help the woman. Unfortunately, neither the expensive drugs nor chemotherapy could save Barbara Hall. Liam was only seven years old at the time, and he was terribly upset by his mother's passing. Quentin never managed to forget how the boy's eyes filled with tears as he looked at his father with condemnation. The businessman knew that his son believed that he could do anything. But that wasn't true, as there have always been things in life that money couldn't buy. Of course, when Liam grew up, he stopped blaming his father for everything, although he didn't always find common ground with him. And now, having learned that his son was in a relationship, Quentin decided to have a heart-to-heart -heart with him. Son, I respect your choice and your feelings, but what do you know about this woman? Who are her parents? Why is she still single at 35? The banker asked. Liam tensed up visibly, but then he pulled himself together and replied. All I care about is that Jessica is a good person. Her parents are ordinary people who don't think that they are better than others, unlike some. Quentin immediately realized what his son was hinting at. Liam's answers sounded sharper than he intended, but the banker still swallowed the insult and immediately tried to smooth out the sharp corners. I believe that she is a good woman. I'm only asking you of one thing. Please don't rush into marriage. Liam's face showed that he didn't like his father's answer. Frankly speaking, the man was head over heels for this woman. And as we all know, reason rarely takes precedence over feelings in such cases. I think I'll make my own decisions, Dad. I heard your advice, but it's still up to me, Liam said and left for the office. Quentin watched his son leave. Then he hesitated for a moment before picking up the phone and saying, Hello, Henry, are you busy? Please have someone follow my son. I just need to know who he spends time with and where he goes. The man on the other end of the line was the head of the security at the bank that Quentin owned. Henry knew the banker for decades and understood him perfectly. I'll have it done, Mr. Hall. I'll make sure that your son will never know that a guardian angel was assigned to him. The head of security replied confidently. Quentin seemed to like his answer. The banker was used to staying in control of any situation in his life, especially if it concerned members of his family. Liam was Quentin's only son, so he couldn't allow some gold digger to take advantage of him. He knew that Liam went to Jessica's place and would probably spend the night there. Quentin got up from the table to stretch his legs and headed into the kitchen to get some coffee. The banker knew that he would end up working late again, which meant that he needed some caffeine. Having gotten a cup of coffee, Quentin was about to throw some trash into a wastebasket when he saw something strange in it. He didn't have the habit of checking the contents of the trash can. It was just that the object that caught the banker's attention stood out from the rest of the trash, and it even seemed as if it was intentionally laid out for everyone to see. Having taken a closer look, Quentin shuddered. But there could be no mistake, it was a pregnancy test. Moreover, the two clearly visible lines on it indicated that the person who took it was actually pregnant. The unexpected news took Quentin by surprise. So that's what it's all about. That Jessica must have managed to get pregnant already. That's a smart move. I guess it's the age difference. She thinks a couple of moves ahead. This news made the banker lose his peas. No, the prospect of becoming a grandfather didn't frighten him. It was something else. Quentin was afraid that his son was too naive and gullible and had fallen victim to some woman's scam. Going through various scenarios in his brain, the banker tried to figure out what he should do next. Ultimately, Quentin decided to pay a visit to his son's fiancée and have an honest conversation with her. Convinced that he'd made the right decision, the banker went to the bed. 
The next morning, Quentin called Henry as soon as he opened his eyes. He was confident that the man would have some information for him. The banker's institution didn't fail him. Henry did a really great job and provided the banker with the most important piece of information, the address of Liam's fiance. The neighborhood wasn't bad, which made Quentin conclude that the owner of the house wasn't poor. Having decided not to put things off, Quentin went to the address he got from the bank's head of security. Jessica's house was a rather big and had a terrace and ivy-covered walls. Having parked at the curb, Quentin headed for the door. At that moment, all he was thinking about was how to start the conversation and what he would focus on. Immersed in his anxious thoughts, the banker rang the doorbell. Soon he heard the sound of someone's footsteps coming from deep inside the house. When the door opened, Quentin was ready to see pretty much anyone, from the winner of beauty pageants to some modest employee of the city library. But when a slender, pretty woman opened the door, the banker was so surprised that he involuntarily took a couple of steps back. Jessica, is that really you? But how is that even possible? Quentin whispered, unwilling to believe his eyes. The banker was so surprised that it even made the woman smile. Yes, Quentin, as you can see, it is really me, the woman answered. The banker didn't know what to think. To say that he was shocked would be a huge understatement. Quentin didn't just know the woman standing in front of him, but he even had a relationship with her many years back. How long has it been? 15 years? Quentin thought frantically. Their relationship started rather accidentally and quite expectedly didn't lead to anything serious. In the depths of his soul, Quentin still had feelings for his late wife, although he understood that he had the right to move on and have relations with other women. And now, it turned out that Jessica was having a baby with his son. That was simply unacceptable. Meanwhile, Jessica invited her guest inside the house, after which she offered him a cup of coffee. How long have you two been involved? Quentin was the first one to break the silence. Seven months, you have a wonderful son. Nothing like his father, Jessica replied with a smile. Quentin understood that the woman deliberately pointed to the fact that he was the one to initiate their breakup many years ago. Still unable to believe that Jessica had chosen such a cruel way to take revenge, Quentin tried to find out as much as possible. But before he could even say another word, the front door opened and Liam came into the living room. Dad, what are you doing here? The young man asked, having a hard time keeping his emotions in check. It's not what you think, son. I just came in. I came to meet your fiance. The banker turned pale. Oh, stop it, Quentin. He knows everything. Jessica cut him off. Quentin looked at his son and realized that his fiance was telling the truth. The banker's mind went hazy. The past and present intertwined into a single whole, putting Quentin in an extremely awkward position. On the one hand, he felt a bit guilty for the way he treated Jessica, and on the other hand, he felt ashamed because his son had just caught his father with his ex-girlfriend. There's nothing you can say to change my mind. We've already made our decision, Liam exclaimed. Quentin knew his son well enough not to doubt him. Liam always valued truth and honesty, and therefore, the situation with Jessica took a very unexpected turn. But unlike his naive son, Quentin really knew Jessica, who had long dreamed of marrying a rich man, so she wouldn't have to worry about money ever again. This fact was actually the real reason behind their breakup. Since the man realized they wouldn't be able to have a civil conversation, Quinton said goodbye and went out into the street. His flushed face was burning with shame over what he had just gone through. No, Jessica, you're not getting a second chance. You couldn't make it work with me, so now you're trying to get my son, Quinton thought on his way to the bank. Carefully maneuvering into the endless stream of cars, the banker thought about what he could do in this situation. First of all, Quentin blocked all of his son's accounts and credit cards. Then he ordered the security guard to drive Liam's car to a paid parking lot and bring the keys back to Quentin. Of course, the banker knew that by doing so, he would incur the wrath of his son, but he believed that he had no other choice. As expected, Liam got into a terrible fight with his father after which he slammed the door and disappeared into the rapidly approaching twilight. It's okay, son. Now we'll see who's right, Quentin whispered, brushing away a tear. Deep down, the banker was very hurt that his son didn't want to see Jessica's true motives. 
Having realized that Liam wouldn't just back down, Quentin decided to wait out the situation. A month passed. During this time, the head of the bank's security ran a background check on Jessica and got a lot of interesting information, which surprised even the experienced Quentin. Now he saw his son's fiance in a completely different light. Great job, Henry. You did a truly great job. I will arrange for you to get a bonus for it, the banker said, closing the folder. Now the man was even more convinced that he did the right thing and he intended to stand his ground. But before Henry had the time to leave his boss's office, Liam came in. The young man's eyes read longing and sadness and every move spoke of the fact that he wasn't doing well. Having given his father a guilty look, Liam said, I'm sorry, Dad. I, I was wrong. Jessica and I aren't right for each other. Quentin walked over to his son and put his arm around his shoulders. The banker knew that Liam had matured several years during this month. Trying to provide for himself and his fiance, the young man worked as a taxi driver and a loader and even tried distributing flyers. But his modest salary clearly didn't meet the needs of Jessica, who was used to living a rich lifestyle. Quentin listened carefully to his son, after which he said, She tricked you. She was never pregnant. Jessica can't have children. She's well aware of this fact. Liam finally understood everything. It was the first time he managed to look at the situation from a completely different angle. Jessica, who seemed like the perfect woman to Liam just recently, didn't seem all that great anymore, while his father only wished him happiness and thus did his best to stop him from making a huge mistake. On that day, father and son had a long conversation at the office until they finally came to an understanding. Liam broke off any contact with Jessica, but only after telling her what he thought of her and what she did. Once Liam broke up with her, the woman realized that she'd been outsmarted and was now left with nothing. Having later become his dad's right hand at the bank, Liam found a worthy partner, which made all of his friends and acquaintances unspeakably happy for him. Looking at the happy newlyweds, Quentin told them that he wouldn't mind babysitting his grandchildren, and the more, the merrier.